Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm excited to have Mike Moyer, who's a top business leader and entrepreneur. A little bit about Mike. He started a number of companies, including Banana Graphics, which is a product development and merchandising company, Moondog, an outdoor clothing manufacturing company, Vicarious Communication, which is a marketing technology for the medical industry, Lake Shark Ventures, and several others. He's held senior level marketing positions with companies that sell everything from vacuum cleaners to luxury wine. Maybe we'll find out a little bit about how you do that, what you what the difference is selling that. He teaches entre if that wasn't enough. Uh, Mike, you know, you teach entrepreneurship at both Northwestern University and University of Chicago Booth School of Business. And Mike is the author of several books, including Slicing Pie, a book about dividing up equity in early stage companies, which I've listened to twice before. Thank you, Mike, for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. You know, since this is Inspired Insider, Mike, my question is, what's been the lowest point in your career and how did you fight through that, those tough times? Uh, I mentioned earlier this company that I was traveling five days a week for. I was actually, the, the reason I was traveling is because they were just far enough away from my home that it was too far to do, to take a two hour each way drive. So I, I stayed in a really lousy motel. Uh, the offices were really lousy. The people that worked there were sort of unscrupulous. Um, it just was not a very happy time in my life. And, and I, I, I wanted to get away from that as much as I could. And I ultimately did get away from it. Um, but you know, the, I was making decent money, and I did love the industry. I liked the people, the customers, and fishermen, and they're just doing fun stuff. And I got to do some cool things, fishing in Nicaragua and and traveling. And but uh, I, I knew that I wanted to be somewhere where I could put myself in a position to be closer to my family, and doing something that I was more engaged in. Um, I, I'm not a fisherman. I don't know much about fishing, and uh, and uh, you, you got to do something that you're really passionate about in order for it to really something you can do long term. I ask my students today, I say, you know, what can you do? What are you good at doing? What do you love doing? And can you do that for a long period of time? And if you answer those questions properly, you can decide whether or not you're on the right track. You know, I didn't love fishing. I can't do much fishing. I didn't see myself in the fishing industry for a very long time. I liked the marketing aspect of it, and I was good at that, but I just didn't see myself in it for a long time. Um, so you, you got to answer a few questions about yourself before you can really move forward with the business, yeah. business, I think. Did you have kids at the time? Yes, I had two kids, and uh, they were toddlers, and uh, it made it a lot really hard to uh, be away from them all week. Not only for me, that but my, my wife would yeah. have to take care of them by herself all week. Right. That is tough. Um, so how did you eventually transition out of that? Well, I, that was, that's been seven or eight years now. And I knew what I wanted to teach, and I teach at University of Chicago. I teach at Northwestern now, and you don't just get a job with them. Right, you know, you yeah. got to kind of work the angle. So I, I did as much guest lecturing as I could. I became a teaching assistant with the professors that I knew. Uh, I did teaching assistant a couple of years in the London campus. Went over there. I coached teams for the New Venture Challenge, business plan competition. I do as much as I could do to get involved on campus and let people know that I wanted to you know, ultimately teach a class. Um, so no matter how good your credentials are, you can't just, there's some jobs you can't just walk into, but when mm -hmm. opportunities arose, um, I was sort of on the radar. Yeah. Um, so it allowed me to make that step. And uh, yeah. I've really enjoyed doing that. And I, I couldn't be more proud to work for both universities. They're just fantastic. And, uh, uh, but I, I at the, when I was at that job, I began setting myself up for future success. So you got to start now yeah. if you want to be successful in 10 years, laying the foundation. Yeah, I ask that because I'm sure there's a lot of people listening or watching who are in that position. They have a job. They're ma maybe making good money, and it's kind of got them hooked in. Maybe they don't love it. How do they transition to something that they love? As opposed to, you know, if they have a family and they're, you know, they're caught between, well, I want to provide for my family and do what I love, my passion, uh, you know, go that route. So the, one of the key things is you, you can't be forced into it. So, you know, we had a lot of layoffs in the past, you know, three or four years and people get laid off. When you're laid off in that situation, you're, you're forced into a new lifestyle. 
and you can't always pull it off the way you want because you got you're, you're panicking. You got to look for a job. You're, you're all constantly under pressure. If you know you want to make this kind of move and you can start thinking ahead, your job will be better anyway. If you know, if you, if you, you I call it runaway. How much time do I have before the pressure builds? Yeah. If I don't have any runway and I lose my job, the pressure's on, and I can't design my life the way I want to design it. And I've always known that. Um, so years ago, I started trying to design it the way I wanted to, but mm. with the anticipation of, you know, so you're basically using your day job to set you up for your future job. Um, but sometimes people are so focused on what's going on. And it gets back to that, that, that cycle. People, when they're making money, they spend money. And when they're not making money, they, they save money, which is just the opposite of what you should be doing. Mm-hmm. When you're making money, you should save it. So when you are not making money, you can invest in your life and invest in things that matter to you. Um, so you know, you re- planning ahead is is really critical. You know, I th- there's there's guys. You may be one of them that has you know a big audience and email lists, and you can just kind of shoot it out there and things were happening. Well, it starts it with one family up. member listening to right. it. That's what it starts. Starts with your arm's reach. Right. It takes a long time to build up and build up and build up. Yeah. You can't just get into it. Right. Um, so you got to have runway to make it work. Yeah. Yeah. So Mike, on the flip side of it, what's been one of the proud proudest moments of your career? Um, you know, uh, this past year I, I've traveled all over the world talking to audiences about slicing pie and, uh, I just have been really proud every time I've been up there doing it. I was, I was in two weeks ago, I did, I did, I was in Kenya, Uganda wow. and South Africa and the audiences were just so great and they, they needed the, the solution so much. And, uh, I just felt so proud to be able to bring this to people that it really mattered. Um, and uh, I'm going to the Netherlands again, and they're actually trying to change the laws of the Netherlands to accommodate dynamic equity splits, and they've wow. translated the book into Dutch, and, and it's things like that that really, you know, if I died today and being known as the guy who brought dynamic equity splits in a practical sense to the world, I'd be happy. Um, so the things I've been most proud of are the things that have happened really in the past few years. 